CataractCoach.com. Complete list of all medications used. People ask me for routine cataract surgery, what are the medicines that are used? So let's go through a whole case here, and I'll tell you about every single medicine we are using, at least in the eye. Now starting off, this is preservative-free lidocaine 1%, cut 50-50 with balanced salt solution. Of course, it's important to use preservative-free. I find that if you cut it 50-50 with balanced salt solution, it's a lot gentler in the eye, doesn't sting as much, also helps a little bit with dilation, as you see there. So we'll put our viscoelastic in the eye. The systemic sedation for the patients typically is Versed, which is midazolam. And the patients get one to two milligrams of that given IV by the anesthesiologist. Now, in the pre-op area, the patients had Propericane, 0.5%, Tropicamide, 1%, and Phenylephrine, 2.5%. Of course, those are to dilate the eye ahead of surgery. And you can do up to three sets of all these together in order to achieve that. And that dilates the patients very nicely. You can use longer acting agents, but for me, I don't want them to stay dilated for longer than just a few hours. Prior to the prep, before doing our prep, we're using tetracaine 0.5% in at least three doses. That's going to give really nice anesthesia to the ocular surface. Very good anesthesia to the cornea. Not quite as much anesthesia to the conjunctiva. So notice I don't like to pinch the conjunctiva with forceps. Patients may feel that, and I don't want to leave a subconjunctival hemorrhage. So there's our capsorexis, looks great. And then let's talk about what else we're using. So patients are using drops ahead of time. So preoperatively, the patients are using moxifloxin 0.5%, diflupredinate 0.05%, and napafinac 0.3%. So that's obviously an antibiotic, a fluoroquinolone, a steroid, and an NSAID, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. And so those are being used by the patients ahead of time, and at least a day before the surgery. It helps patients get in the habit of using their drops, and obviously helps clean up that ocular surface, minimize inflammation, and you have these medicines on board before the first incision is ever done. So that's very helpful to have the anti-inflammatory, especially, already on board. We'll make a short work of that nucleus here. That looks great. Now, IV, sometimes the patient will get a little bit more medicine. And sometimes they can get a little more Versed or they can get some fentanyl or alfentanil. Post-op by the patient, look at the same medicines, moxifloxacin, diflupredinate, and napafinac. I typically have to use the moxifloxacin, TID, for a week, the diflupredinate, BID, for one week, then once a day for one week. And the napafinac is at bedtime for about four weeks. And that really helps prevent any of that cystoid macular edema that can be an issue in rare cases. So patients do very well with this regimen. Now, some of those medicines may be quite expensive depending on where you are in the, in the U.S. or outside the U.S. and the rest of the world. So the alternatives, you can use ofloxacin or other antibiotic that may be different spectrum of coverage. You can do penicillin acetate or any other steroid you want or bromfenac or other NSAID. It's really quite flexible. Now, I like to give an antibiotic, a steroid, and the NSAID. Of these, the one that's probably least required is the antibiotic because you'll see at the end of the surgery, we'll put some um, moxifloxin inside the anterior chamber in intracamerally at the end of the case. So these are all important things. Now, the patients can also opt to have intracameral medications placed. There are companies now that make combination drops. There are companies now that make steroid implants. There's one that can go behind the iris and elude dexamethasone. There's one that goes in the uh, eyelid canaliculus and the puncta, and that can elude steroid, and that can help control inflammation. We can put, as you'll see in this case, I'm going to put some intracameral tramsinol at the end. I'll tell you about that. There are even preparations where surgeons put stuff transzonular, so through the zonular support and place stuff, or medicine, steroids, etc., in the vitreous. Now, I'm not a huge fan of placing a lot of steroid in the vitreous because a couple issues. One, are the zonules really allowing you to go through them without damage? Because if I put tripan blue dye in the eye and the patient has normal zonular support, how much of that blue dye goes through the zonules and into the vitreous cavity? The answer is none. So for me to get big steroid particles through, I may have to really push through and poke through. and Maybe I'll damage these zonular support, which I don't want to do. Other thing is I don't want that big, huge floater. So when you put all that tri triamcinolone in the vitreous, it floats around. It really, patients notice in their vision until it absorbs. And what if they're steroid responders? 
and you have a big depot injection in the eye, how do you get it out? Are you going to do a full vitrectomy? It's tough. You can put subconjunctival or subtenon injections in medications as well. For my routine case, I don't do that, but could you do it? For sure. People have used subconjunctival injections of antibiotics, such as ANSEF, and they can use steroids like dexamethasone. You could even do subtenon injection of a steroid like triamcinolone, and that can help a lot to control inflammation. But for most of my patients, you can see the surgeries are pretty um, non-traumatic, minimally invasive. There's not a ton of inflammation. So now I'll show you the end of the case here. Here's some extra medicines. Triamcinolone going in the eyes, 0.5 milligrams, preservative-free. Just a little bit, and I'll show you that. I'll also put a little aliquot of moxifloxin, just 0.05 cc, so a very small amount. There's the triamcinolone. Very little. It's going in the anterior chamber. It'll stay there just for a couple of days. And you'll see by tomorrow morning, the patient will have very little of it left in the eye. And certainly within a couple of days, it's all flushed out. Remember, the anterior chamber turns over every 90 or 100 minutes or so. So 24 hours, it turns over quite a few times. Let's look at the end of the case here. We're doing a, cap, a, a LRI here. I like that caps rexus, by the way. It looks good overlapping the optic. So small LRI to be paired with that incision, the main incision, for a small degree of astigmatism. That looks great. Now, at the end of the case here, look, there's a slight leak from the incision, very slight. So to seal it, I choose a Wexel sponge soaked in tetracaine, and that's a hypotonic solution, and so it causes osmosis. So the fluid from the sponge, the water goes into the cornea, and it swells it focally. Just hold that there for a few seconds. Be patient. Don't rush it. And you'll see that will absolutely seal the incision. Now, when we go back and look, we can see the incision is absolutely dry. So those are the list of medications that we use in surgery. I hope you found this useful. And share in the comments here. Let me know what you're using for medications in your cataract surgeries. Thanks for watching. And check out cataractcoach.com.